Hi, welcome back to Mrs. O'Gram's Maths. We are going to take a look at loci of complex numbers today. But before we do, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about vectors which can help make dealing with loci a, a bit easier. All right, so vectors have a magnitude and a direction. So for example, we have this vector here. Um, now, we talk about magnitude being the size of it, the length of the line, and it gets given an arrow on it to give it a direction. Now, it doesn't have a fixed position in um, space, so it's not actually on a coordinate grid, um, although you can apply it to coordinate grids, and later we'll apply it to the Argand diagram so we can look at locus um, of complex numbers. But for example, this vector here, we can label it as the vector A, which usually, if you're handwriting it, gets given a little line. Now we can do that anywhere, and it is equivalent. So this is also the vector A. Now if we were to um, reverse its direction, so this one here, if we're going in the opposite direction, that's the uh, vector of minus A. So when you turn it around and you go the, the opposite direction to it, you get a different vector. Now we could have another vector, say um, B. So if we call this one the vector B, we can have it like this. Minus B would go in its opposite direction. We can double its value as well. So we could say uh, 2B. Oops, that wasn't a very good line. Here we go. Hang on. If we doubled its size, it would be, then be the vector 2B like this and so on. And then we can start doing things like adding them together and subtracting them. So if I wanted to think about what the vector a plus b looks like, this is giving me um, direction. So we're doing a direction vector a followed by the direction vector b. So we do a first. So that was going like this. So that's a followed by b like this. And we end up with our resulting vector being this one. So this one is a plus b. And we can do the same with subtraction as well. So if we just make a little room here. So if I wanted to do the vector a minus the vector b, we will do the positive vector a and then we'll take b and reverse its direction. So we've got a followed by the negative of b, so it's this one here but in reverse. I've just shifted that out of the way a little bit. So this is the negative vector b. So the vector we were looking for is this one here. This orange one would be, okay, oh, let me try that again. This would be a minus b. Okay, so that is how we work with the basics of vectors when we're adding them and taking them away. They're like a set of instructions, a set of directions of um, how to get from one point to another. Now this can be applied to a coordinate grid where we've got the origin O, and usually when we've got um, the vector that's given in lowercase form, we can call its endpoint the uppercase form of that, and that vector of little a can also be represented as the direction vector from the origin to a so, and that gets written like this so this here would be o a similarly for the vector b we have o b like this so it's it's saying we're giving the directions of how to get from the origin to b so this becomes o b like this and B is the point that it takes us to if we start at the origin. Now, if we go back to thinking about when we did the A minus B on the previous slide, um, what that meant it, of what it looks like, then it meant that we would do the A vector first. So go from the origin to A followed by a negative of OB. So that negative direction of OB would take us up to here. And it would give us this resulting vector um, in the orange there, um, which I don't know, it, it might be that we then label that as our third position C, so that could become OC as that vector there. Let me just move this out the way here. So that we've got this new one, new position of OC um, as a vector. Now take a look at what that that line there is, we can actually take that line and put it onto 
here, it's the same vector. It's just in a different position. And remember what I said on the previous slide was vectors don't actually, they don't have a fixed position. We can put them anywhere in there at the equivalent vector. So we've got this triangle shape going on, triangle up here, which we can put anywhere we want, and it's meaning the same thing. And the reason to think about it like that is that this we can then see that this is giving us a vector that gives us how to get from b to a and that's always the case if you've got this subtraction going on so it's how to get from b to a and that's the key piece of information that helps us with complex numbers so say we have two complex numbers z1 and z2 we can start thinking about what does it mean to talk about z2 minus z1 and if there would be it would were to be plotted on an argon diagram it might look something like this i'm keeping the both in that positive quadrant um, upper right at the moment um, so we we can think about z1 being a vector z2 being a vector from the origin um, so z2 minus z1 means we go from z1 to z2 like you just saw with the vectors stuff so it's this line here so now we could do things like find the argument of Z2 minus Z1. Now the argument is the um, angle that's made by a complex number uh, with the horizontal real axis. So you draw your horizontal line in like this, and the argument is just here. So it's that theta that we've got there. And you could use trigonometry to work that out if you know what Z1 and Z2 is and so on. We can also find the modulus of those using Pythagoras. So if we wanted to, we could find the modulus of Z2 minus Z1. Um, now I'm just gonna give that a random constant at the moment so I can mark it on the diagram. The modulus would be the length of this line here. And then we can move on to some of the harder stuff of drawing sets of points that fit certain conditions. So what if we were told something like the argument of z, our complex number, um, has got to equal pi by 4? And we want to draw onto our diagram the locus that represents this. So locus means that we're going to draw all of the points that would satisfy this condition. So z can be anywhere on our argon diagram, so long as the argument that it makes is pi by 4. Now, pi by 4 is 45 degrees. So we're looking at places like this z could be here because if we drew that um, argument we would get 45 degrees um, or pi by 4 just here but z could also be here it could also be here that still gives us an argument of pi by 4 and in fact anywhere from the origin upwards on that 45 degree line is going to satisfy our equation so our locus is all of the points on there so we do an arrow indicating that that can go on forever in that direction now have a think about if it had said the argument of z minus 2 is pi by 4. Now remember what we talked about with um, that subtraction of things. This means we're going from 2 to z, wherever z might be. So if we plot 2 here, then z has to be anywhere where the line made from 2 to z makes an argument of pi by 4. So again we're going off at that 45 degree angle. So this one would work right here. If we joined those two up and we went from 2 to that new point, we would get an argument of pi by 4. So we can go in that 45 degree line like this to represent this argument of z minus 2 is equal to pi by 4. I'm going to throw a few things into this final example. So we've got um, an inequality now. In fact, I'm going to make that one a less than or equal to. OK, so the argument of z plus i, we'll start with that. Now, first of all, this is not as a subtraction. So we need to turn it into what the equivalent subtraction would be so we can think about it as a vector. So this is z minus negative i, which means we're going from, our, from negative i to z. OK, so here is negative i. Now, we're going to head off in a direction where uh, the argument made can lie between 0 and negative pi by 4. 
Um, now, just as a little side note, I've used pi by four on all of this just to make it easy to draw and talk about because it's um, easy to spot that 45 degrees, but it of course could be any angle. Okay, so the argument made as we head off in the direction of Z, it has to go between the horizontal line for that less than or equal to zero and negative pi by four, so a negative 45 degree line. So from I, if we kept it along the horizontal line, it would go like this. And going to a negative pi by four angle would be anything in this direction. Like so, but we can't be equal to negative um, pi by four. So we're actually going to need that to do that as a dashed line. And since we can be anywhere between those two lines to be between the negative pi by four and the zero, we are going to shade that Z can be anywhere within this area here. All right, well done. You made it through what was a really long video because there was quite a bit to fit into there. But now you know how to approach uh, loci of complex numbers.